and welcome back. Now today we're going to be talking about some RS485 modules. That's these little things here, one there and one at the back. And you need two of them because, well, they're part of a, a sort of a transceiver set, I suppose you could call it. So we're going to talk about those and they're very, very easy to implement. And this came about because um, a viewer on my channel said um, it's all very well talking about the NRF 24L01 transceivers. That's the wireless modules. Very, very good, I might add. Um, but sometimes wireless just doesn't cut it and a hardwired solution is going to be best. Um, and yeah, that could well be the case, actually. So if you've got an outbuilding of some kind, perhaps, um, and well, it could be quite far away because this particular uh, protocol although strictly speaking the RS485 isn't a protocol it's more a description of um, an electronic standard but anyway that aside the um, the protocol does allow a distance of about a kilometer between those two units and it's pretty nifty as well although you can't have distance and speed both at the same time so if you have got something say strung 200 meters away two wires is all you need before we come on to this there's an important announcement yes i've started a new blog and you can find details of that in just a second and the reason that started is because i was playing about with this little device not that that's an ftdi usb serial to usb converter this little device now this is fairly simple it's um, an esp 8266 on a little board little adapter board that i can unplug there it is and it plugs into this board that also has some sort of microcontroller somewhere present that little one and it controls this one relay so this is effectively sort of an internet um, of things device right so get this set up right and you can switch on a lamp or a heater or whatever right ideal ideal for me in my new workshop when and if that ever comes about however although i've managed to sort of talk to the esp side of things i can't get the app that's on the android phone i've got to talk to this um, i can talk to this with my browser but not in the right manner so i can't send stuff to here because i don't know what it is i'm sending the app is a little bit obscured isn't it we don't know when we say on what it is it's transmitting down here now these this could have been a nice video um, to do had it worked but and one day i hope it does work so i can do a video on it but in the meantime you can read all about this and any other thing that happens in my life in this sort of arduino microcontroller internet of things world on my new blog here's the title so it's dead easy to remember if you know me it's ralphbacon.blog could be simpler could it really in fact i'm really surprised that of all the ralph bacons in the world um i'm the first one to grab a blog very glad that i did so you're about to read up about this now do please be gentle with me because it's only just gone live and i haven't really tweaked it yet properly so and they do say do it step by step so that's what i'm doing so you'll see it change over the forthcoming months so now it's march 2018 so I give it uh, you know two or three months to really stabilize and settle down but at least i can put stuff on there perhaps two or three times a week you know just to tell you what i'm doing things i've found problems i found and so forth and interesting things that i'm looking at rather than a video because a video as you might imagine takes a lot of effort to do takes a lot of time to do and i probably can only get one out every two weeks so the blog is the sort of a uh, filling gap if you like and this is the landing page of my blog as you can see it's um, pretty brand new i've left one comment just a few minutes ago on here and it is all about the ESP8266 Wi-Fi relay. Yes, small item, big problems. You're not kidding. So there's only one real post. That uh, bottom post there is what uh, WordPress put on there for you. Just so you've got something to start with. I'm leaving that on there for now. Um, but there we are. That's where it is. So ralphbacon.blog, I invite you to have a look. And that will link back if you go onto the welcome page. It gives a link back to my YouTube videos. And eventually... When I found out how all this works, it's early days yet, the blog will actually contain the blog rather than nothing. So that post you saw two screens ago, this one here, which we can click on the button and find the actual entry. I don't know why it's not in my blog entry here. <laughs> so that's what I mean, you see, early days. Be kind and gentle. 
Okay, enough of that. Back to the things in hand. So this. Now, this did not go very well at all. This is a fairly simple thing, and I thought I'd do this, as I say, because somebody mentioned it on the comments of the NRF24L01 Plus Wi-Fi modules. Um, here's the comment. And I thought, yeah, that would be easy enough to do, because these really are cheap as chips. Let me just get my uh, pointer. And I thought, well... Let's let's do a very quick video on these because there's probably quite a few people who don't want Wi-Fi or can't use Wi-Fi for whatever reason and they just want a serial connection. Now it takes two wires and that's the black and white wires you see here. Although I've got them pressed into the breadboard, they can also be screwed into these little green terminals. The only other thing it needs is a common ground. Okay, which could be earth. So this black wire here from the second Arduino, the responding Arduino here, is also connected to ground. Now, of course, in a little demo like this, everything's connected to everything, so that's not difficult. But what if, for example, your barn or outhouse or outbuilding or whatever was a considerable distance away and you were sending data down two wires like that and you had to have a common ground or earth? Well, earth could be your ground. So you could connect one Arduino, the negative here, to ground, and that one as well, and then you'd have a common path, and that works fine. The reason you need that, apparently, because although the way this works, the RS-485 protocol, you know, is the differential between these two wires, um, it does need an earth, because otherwise you get lots of EMI and RFI and all sorts of nasties happening along these wires. By all means, try it without the common earth, but don't blame me if you get garbled signals back. Now, there's a lot about the RS-485 on Wikipedia, so if we go over to the browser, there we are, look, whole thing about RS-485, and you can read this and, uh, well, just understand it a bit more. By the way, when it talks about these sort of um, resistors, these are already on board on our little ones down here, okay, so you don't have to um, repeat that, which is good news for us. Uh, master slave arrangement, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We haven't got full duplex operation working here because we haven't got four wires. Um, two wires is probably okay, and you could use, for example, quite happily, you could use an old Ethernet cable or telephone wire. That would work just as well. They don't have to be twisted, although twisted wires would give rejection to interference better. But it's not strictly necessary. And the other thing is, of course, that RS-485 gives you is not just two units. You can hang several units. I can't quite remember now the maximum, but it's something like 10 or something, on the same two wires. So it's a bit like I squared C, but in a more simplistic form. You have to then write the logic on each of the receiving stations on your Arduino or whatever to say, is that particular message for me or not? And then either continue processing it or just, just stopping. But we're just going to do it with two here. We're going to send out some very simple data across here. Now, I said uh, this didn't go according to plan. Obviously, when I do these videos, I have the, the advantage and luxury, of course, of cutting when things don't go quite right. And, of course, being able to prepare beforehand, a bit like um, the old UK Blue Peter Charles programme where they'd bring out from behind the bench, here's one I made earlier, and their little model is already done. That would take them hours to do normally. Um, so, fine, it always looks like things work here. So I was doing this um, a day or so ago, connecting it all up wouldn't work. Or rather, what I should say is the transmitting Arduino said it was transmitting. I put my trusty little scope on here, this one here, remember from a previous video? Very, very useful. So I put the scope on those two points there to see if anything was actually coming out. Yes, it was. So that proved that that transmitter was working, coming down the wires to this one, but this one was saying, I can't see anything. Now, as it happened, I had it on these two boards initially, two little nanos. Now, these are not 328P processors, these are 168 um, processors, AT 
uh, megas, still the same though, and they've just got a small amount of memory. But I thought, well, perhaps I've broken one of the pins, I've overloaded it in one of my experiments. So I thought, fine, we'll dig out a couple more and try different boards. Still no luck. So at this stage, I knew that the data was coming down to here. This wasn't seeing anything. And I thought, surely it can't be this, because it is lit up after all. It looks fine. Mm -mm. Here's the offending culprit. This one here. This is the one I was using. Took me a good two hours to diagnose it was this, which is far too long, really. But I just didn't expect the hardware to fail. But it just goes to show that some of the stuff from China does fail sometimes. And this one doesn't work. Now, it might be something really stupid. It might be a wrong value resistor. It might be a tiny little soldering bridge or something across one of these legs. I mean, it could be anything. I haven't looked at it. Believe me, I was not in the mood to inspect this and find out exactly what's going wrong. I mean, some of the soldering it does look a bit dodgy, though. All that flux left on there and everything. But anyway, so that's the, the NAF one which we'll put to one side, and if I can't get it working, I'll burn it or something. And this is a replacement, and it works just fine. And we'll have a look at the code in just a sec. So it just goes to show, though, that not everything works first time, or second time, or third time. Sometimes it takes some real digging to get it to work. And, um, well, hardware from China can be a culprit very easily. OK, let's have a look at the code. Right, here's the code window then. Now we've got two Arduinos, obviously, here. One for each of these transponders. So one's in your barn or outbuilding or whatever, you know, 50 metres away. And one's inside your house. One pair of these, so that's these two and those two. Fine. Now we're going to call one the sender for this demo. That's that one at the back. That's the sender. And this is the responder. So what I've done here is to send some stuff out from this one at the back. Uh, down the wires to this one that receives it and then sends it back to this one which is then listening for some kind of response sort of we'll come on to that so let's while we're talking about this let's just set the actual thing running um, so it's waiting for me to press something because I've paused it so I just got to make this a bit bigger I think this window there we are. You can just see the send button there. Right, so if I press that, there we are. So what this is sending is a string. What we're sending is, in fact, RS485. Um, so on here we're saying sending RS485. Okay, that's fair enough. And the receiving station, so this one here, which I'm monitoring via the use of um, another Arduino IDE setup. There's no code in it. it all it is is um, setting the serial monitor at the correct port. So I've got this one on port 6. And I'm just seeing what comes out. So you can see the receiving one says, look, I've received RS485. Um, that's, that's pretty good. That's what we expect. And what it then does is send back those values to, well, this, this sketch here again. Okay. And so this this one here, but if you can see, we've got five R S four eight, sort of a different order. Well, don't worry about it because it hasn't gone wrong. What's happened is that when we send the R, imagine what's happening. It's coming from this one down the wire, received here. Having sent the R, this one's saying, "Is there anything for me?" Now, normally, the first time it go, no, there isn't. But, of course, I've had this running now. So the last thing this sent back was the five of the previous iteration, if that makes sense. So the first thing this sees is a five. Now, we can prove that simply by resetting both these Arduinos. Right, now, this shows you it better. So what's happening is when I switch this um, initiator or... Um, what did I call it, sender, on first, it sends an R, and it says, is there anything coming back? Well, by that time, nothing's happened, has it? We've sent it down the wire, but this hasn't processed it yet. It's in the, it's in the middle of processing that particular byte. So this says, oh, there's nothing there. Okay, carry on, send the next byte. So it then sends the S down, by which time this has processed the R, 
and I sent it back up the wire to this one. So it's buffered now in the RS485 as a serial um, receive. So this one that says, now I've got back the R. So that's why these are sort of out of step, if that makes sense. Now, of course, your program logic can do this very differently. Um, you can write whole packets together. Um, you don't have to wait to get something back or you, you stop your program and do wait. So what I could have done here, for example, is to say, I'm sending an R and then I'm just going to wait however long it takes before that R gets back to me, before I proceed with the next one. But for a demo, I think it's okay. And the, the code is fairly straightforward. Now we're using software serial because we need more pins, arbitrary pins, to talk down the serial bus on these RS485s because the standard serial, hardware serial on these, is taken up by the USB ports. And that's what we're, we're looking at on screen, isn't it? Now, if you use a mega, you won't have that problem because you'll have, I think it's four hardware um, serial ports on a mega, so you, you don't need to use software serial if that's the case. Um, but we're sticking here with um, uh, Arduino Unos or Nanos just for the demo. Here we determine which pins we're going to use. And each of these little devices, these ones here, um, is told, let me go into full screen mode for this. Um, so on here we have power at the top, so that's five volts at the top, that's fine. And then the A and B lines, they're the, the serial lines that traverse across your courtyard or whatever. But at the other end, we have um, RO, that's uh, receive out, receive enable, DE, which is uh, transmit enable, and DI, which is data in. Okay, so DE and RE, we common together because it's either going to be, they're going to be the same value. We're not going to um, receive and transmit simultaneously. So it's either low, both pins are low, which means receive is enabled, or they're high, which means the data out is enabled, okay, or transmit. Uh, receive out is the data that it's received, and the data in is what it needs to send down the wire. So they're the only four wires we need. Well, it's three, actually, because I say we're commoning two of those together. So we have three wires coming out at that end. Okay, so that's, that's that. Let's go back to the code. Um, yeah, so as I said, the, the RE... Uh, DE, high means transmit, low means receive. We're using the LED pin on board so you can see it flashy flashy. Um, let me just press send and you'll see that. So watch very carefully on the actual Arduinos. You'll just see them flash. There we go. It's quick. If you missed it, you'll have to rewind the video, I'm afraid. Um, now the board rate. Now this is interesting. We'll come on to that as a little comment down below. And this is as fast as these will go, RS485s. Now remember, you can't have both distance and speed. If you've only got a short little distance, perhaps around a room or something like that, you might get away with 115, 200. It's quite fast. And the, the faster it is, the more likely you're going to have a corrupt bite here or there. Um, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Okay, a couple of values here that we're going to use. Here's where we instantiate the software serial and the receive and transmit pins. That's what we tell it what we're using. And, okay, the bug monitor or serial monitor. Um, setting the relevant pins to output mode, because you're after all going to write to these. Both the LED pin, that's the onboard built-in LED. You can, of course, have a standard one. And here, we're saying write to the RS485 pin. That's the, that's the common one, remember. The common one that's connected to both uh, DE and... RE is it? RE and DE, yes, that's right. So that's the common output. We're going to say initially set it low or receive mode. And then we set the board rate. Now look at this comment here about the board rate. Obviously, the sender and the receiver must operate the same board rate. Or nothing's going to happen. We're not going to understand each other. And you can select any one of these. So at the moment, as I'm doing it, the absolute fastest, 115200. When I was playing about with it earlier, I was doing it, what was I using, 2800 or something like that. All seemed to work okay. So in the main loop, we've got this hard-coded string that I'm transmitting, RS485. 
I'm saying just go around on the big long loop and transmit each one of these characters in turn. So here we get the character, we print it out into the monitor here so we can see what we're about to transmit. Then we actually set the um, RS485 into transmit mode and then we transmit it. We have to have a little delay here just to let things finish, otherwise it'll be in the middle of transmission and we'll be setting it back to receive mode again at this point. And then it says, have you sent me something back in return? Is there something available now? Because we're in receive mode again, look. We can say, is there anything waiting to come in on that serial line? The first time there won't be, but after that there will. We just flash a little LED to show a, a bit of action, if you like. Read the byte here, let's put it into RX value. Display it slightly offset like this on the monitor so we can see the sending and receiving is easier. And then we turn off the LED. So whilst we're reading, it just, just flickers that little bit. We have a little delay here, mostly debugging that is, so we don't get too, this doesn't happen too fast, basically. And at the bottom here, the, these two lines here just basically stop until I press that send, purely for debugging mode, okay, purely. So if I press send again, it will all um, leap into life. Now, as you can see on screen at the moment, we have a, a rogue IDE, this one here. This is what I'm saying about the separate IDE, the Arduino IDE that I've loaded up. But I'm not using this, there's no code in it. What I'm using is the actual debug or serial monitor, which I have actually got loaded, but my, my um, capture screen has got a bit confused about which one it's doing. So let me just get that one back. There we are. Okay, got it back. So it's gone around the loop a couple of times. So if I press send again on the main um, sender bit of code, it should all just spring into life again. There it goes. Right, so there we are. I mean, that's not a lot to it, is there, in the send. And the responder one is almost identical. All the code is pretty much the same, except that this time it sends, it receives the value and sends it rather than sending it and receiving it. Okay, so that's pretty much the same. Small caveat then in the receiver. Now this is something that um, I picked up from uh, Nick Gammon actually. You may have heard of Nick Gammon, the guru of all things Arduino. He's saying if you write something down the RS-425 serial bus and then s switch it to receive mode too quickly, you will actually curtail that transmission. The stop bit will go missing or something. So you must have a delay now you could put a fixed delay in, but as he says, he doesn't like that. Um, let's just bring up his web page at the moment. Right, so this is Nick Gammon's site, all about RS-485, and very good it is too, but it's quite in-depth. Um, he's actually using different chips here. We are using Max 485s rather than LTC 1480. He talks about the shield and return and stuff like that, which is always good to read. But the bit we actually want is where he says he got caught out while testing. Here we are. So it's um, flushing the output. He's saying here he got a small gotcha when he was testing with the hardware. He wanted to add in a little delay like this to make sure. So that was okay, but it was a fixed value. And so he says, well, this works better. Now this actually inspects the ports, the UARTs to see, well, in this case, it's not a UART, is it? It's a software serial, but it's inspecting the pins on the port then to see when it's free, when it's finished transmitting. Um, now, I couldn't get this to work. So whether it's because, well, I'm using the wrong port for a start. I should be using pins two and three or something to be on port A. But I couldn't get it working even then. So if you want to play about with that, by all means do. However, the... The computation that he mentions here, of course, is the required time to transmit a bit. Now, a bit is one over the board rate. So, if we, if we, for example, if say our board rate was 9600, um, one over 9600 means that for each bit, individual bit, it will take 104 microseconds to clear that um, that buffer. And of course, we're not just transmitting the value. It's not just 8 bits. There's a whole word involved here. You've got a start bit. You've got the data itself. Then you've got possibly one stop bit. So that's 10 in total. 
So 10 divided by 9600 is about right, just over the 1000 microseconds, so 1 uh, millisecond. However, if you go back to the code window here, it's this delay here we're talking about. Um, it might be worth playing about with this because obviously you want the delay to be as small as possible but still to have absolute confidence that the data is not going to get corrupted or you know chopped off in its prime. So I've done the board rate divided by 10. Oh, you've got to times it by 2 because Nick Gavin says that's what he's found out. And I've added on 100 microseconds just for good measure. And that seems to work okay. But it's just something to think about. It's sort of got you really, as he says, that has really confused people. They go, why is it not working? And the answer is because we're not allowing enough time for the for the data bytes to clear the buffer and actually get out onto the wire before the Arduino has already moved on to other stuff and it just chops it in its, in its prime. So apart from that, then we just set it back to receive mode, set the LED pin down to off and that's it. I mean, it's not a complicated sketch. Okay, let's have a look then where I did get these from. Look at the price and see whether it's worthwhile. And this is where I got them from, Banggood. I haven't been there recently, actually. It's mainly AliExpress these days, but Banggood um, said they can actually deliver them um, cheaper and quicker. So I took these um, 10 units, I mean, it's pretty cheap, isn't it? And they are 5 volt, wanted that, for £3.96, which is about, what, $5 maybe? Let's change it up here. Look, we can do that. We have the technology. We want this in US dollars, and the answer is $5.32. Well, pretty close, wasn't it, what I said? Now, that's pretty cheap, isn't it? So that's 53 cents per item. Or in English money, that's um, 39 pence an item. Well, that's pretty cheap. That's what I bought 10, really, because I thought, well, if you're going to buy two, you might as well buy five. If you're going to buy five and it costs another pound for 10, buy 10. So that's what I've done. Um, is there any information on here? Let's have a look. Um, lots of pictures, which we don't need. And no. So... Um, yeah, I'm afraid you're going to have to refer to the video and all the stuff I'm going to put on there, plus Nick Gammon's library. So if you really are interested in this and want to move it forward, you want multiple units on here, not just two. Um, Nick Gammon has got an example on his website for multiple ones. In fact, I think we skimmed past it last time. Let's have a quick look. Here we are. Here's a typical application, he says. Now, he says it's a 3.3 volt RS485 network. Well... Ours isn't, as far as I can work out, because it's a 5-volt device. What it actually puts out into the RS-485 bus, though, I didn't measure, even though I had my, my trusty little scope on it yesterday to prove that it was all working. I didn't measure the voltage itself, just the presence. So maybe we will have 5 volts on here. And in fact, when you think about it, 5 volts is better than 3.3 in this sense because it can overcome more noise. But the interesting thing to note here, the B and A lines simply get joined together all the way through and this one in the middle here this third one is, is just tapping into the middle really and also uh, Nick here has said actually you've got a shield down these wires that will improve um, noise immunity quite considerably but only ground it at one end do not ground it at both ends because otherwise you'll get some kind of earth loop so what he shows you here it's where he's broken the shield to insert this third one. The shield from here and here is connected, and then it's earthed here, but there's nothing at this end that does anything with the shield. It's just not connected. Okay, so don't make the mistake, make the mistake of thinking, oh, I'll earth this one here to here as well. That's not good. That's um, what happens in audio connections as well. If you start earthing things at both ends, you'll get uh, hum. So we don't want that. Okay, right. I think we've we've covered this now. Really, obviously, you can send bigger messages. You can. Oh, Nick Gammon's got a library, incidentally, somewhere. He says he's got a library that allows you to send packets. I won't find it here. You can scroll through this. I'll put all the links down at the bottom, of course. But once, to be quite honest, once this was all set up, it became blindingly obvious to me 
how easy it would be to send the whole string of data down and get maybe a checksum back or something like that to say, yeah, I've received it and this is what it is, so that you know whether the receiving station has received it or not. I mean, it'd be very, very obvious. And setting this up would take you probably, including the two sketches I've got, if you download those, do this, I should imagine within half an hour, um, it's working. Unless, of course, you're unfortunate enough to get a Duff device and you'll be there three hours like I was, wondering why it didn't work. But that's that's my pain, your gain, you see? Win-win. Well, win for you, anyway. And win for me now because it's working. And we've learned something, that hardware is not infallible. Okay, now, don't forget my blog. Um, as I say, early days yet, but it will tidy itself up as time goes on. So, that's it. RS-485 put to bed and... Uh, well, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the blog and in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.